Welcome to session two of the UGBS 208 Introduction to Financial Accounting. Now in this section, I will take you through manufacturing accounts, now, which um, for our previous discussion, we have been concentrating on trading organizations. But you should be aware that trading organizations usually buy their final pro produce and sell it at a profit. However, you could have some organizations that are involved in the production of their own products after which they would want to sell them. And that is what we refer to as the manufacturing firms. Now, manufacturing firms would need accounting information on their cost buildup in order to determine the total production cost and as well as the selling price for the goods that they have produced. For that matter, in this section, we are going to introduce you to the, how you could determine the cost of production for a manufacturing organization and how you could prepare the final accounts for a manufacturing organization. Specifically, by the end of our discussion, we expect that you should be able to identify and explain the elements of cost of production, determine and calculate prime cost and the cost of production, prepare a manufacturing account by making adjustments for work in progress, show how cost of a product is built up in the final account of a manufacturing company, and determine the manufacturing profit and any adjustments for unrealized profits which would arise as a result of manufacturing profit. We would recommend that you read chapter 17 of Mafu Yadom Asante and Taki, as well as chapter 37 of Frank Woods and Sangster for the purpose of our discussion. Now, in brief, when we want to determine the cost of production, which is needed for calculation of the cost of goods sold in the general income statement for a manufacturing concern, the account which will detail out the various costs for the goods which have been manufactured in a given period is what manufacturing account refers to. Costs can be broken down basically into two. We have direct cost and indirect cost. Direct costs are costs which could easily be traced to the product, whereas indirect costs cannot easily be traced to the product which has been manufactured. Now with direct cost, we have direct material cost, direct labor cost, and direct expense. Now the same way indirect cost, we're going to have indirect materials, indirect labor, and indirect overheads. I'm sure you will be able to give some more examples of direct cost and indirect cost as we move ahead in our discussion. Now, there could be other divisions of cost for the purpose of preparing manufacturing accounts. When we talk about prime cost, we are referring to an aggregate of all the direct costs for a manufacturing organization. So, summing up direct material, direct labor, and direct expense gives us the prime cost for the organization. However, all the cost which is involved in converting the raw material into partly finished product or finished product is referred to as the conversion cost of the organization. And the production cost is the cost of manufacturing the product. So it would involve the prime cost plus all the indirect manufacturing expenses known as factory overheads. For the purpose of our discussion, you should be aware that the kind of inventory which will be available in a manufacturing concern may not be the same as that of a trading organization. Because a manufacturer buys raw materials, converts the raw materials into finished goods, then you could have various types or kinds of inventory within a manufacturing organization. You could have inventory of raw materials, Inventory of work in progress, that is, materials in their intermediate state of production. Then you have inventory of finished goods or finished products. Now, this should make you aware 
that in the statement of financial position at our inventory session, you should show the different types of inventory which is available for a manufacturing concern. And preparing a manufacturing account would basically be following this format. However, there is no need for you to choose the format and try to reproduce it because it follows a certain logic. The logic we use in preparing manufacturing accounts is to first determine the direct cost, i.e. the prime cost of the organization, which involves the direct material consumed, direct labor used, and direct expense incurred within a particular period for producing that product. Now, once we have our prime cost, then we determine our indirect cost or factory overheads, which would involve our indirect material, indirect labor, and indirect expense. The addition of our indirect cost or our factory overheads to our prime cost will give us the cost of production before we make adjustment for work in progress. Now you could call it the gross cost of production. Now once we have our gross cost of production, now any material which is still in process in an intermediate form at the beginning and the end could have an effect on the number or amount of goods produced within a particular period. Hence, we make adjustment for work in progress by adding the opening work in progress and subtracting the closing work in progress. Now, when we are done, the figure we're going to have will be the cost of goods produced, the cost of goods produced. And this literally should be the end of our manufacturing account. Although there are other issues we would introduce you to as we move along. With our income statement, and there is no, the normal income statement which you have learned how to prepare from UGBS 205. Except that, in this case, we are not going to have any specific amount for purchases in a situation where the manufacturing firm produces all of its finished products. However, if the manufacturing firm produces a portion of its finished product and purchases some additional, then we would see both the cost of goods manufactured and purchases appearing in our income statement. So as you can see, in preparing our income statement, you have your sales. If there are any returns, you consider. Now in determining the cost of goods sold, the opening inventory of finished goods ought to be added to the cost of goods manufactured to arrive at the cost of goods which is available for sale. Now, if the organization made any purchases of finished goods, then the purchase of finished goods ought to be added in order to arrive at the cost of goods available for sale. Subtracting our closing inventory will give us the actual cost of goods sold, which will then use to go ahead to determine your gross profits and the other items as you would normally find in your income statement. I'm not sure you're going to have any problems with the preparation of a manufacturing account, an income statement, a statement of financial position for a manufacturing concern. The only addition here is learning how to prepare the manufacturing account, which we have explained clearly that just determine your direct cost, aggregate them to find the prime cost, determine your indirect cost, then add all your indirect cost to your direct cost. Then if there's any work in progress at the beginning and at the end, you make an adjustment for the work in progress to determine your cost of production. At this stage, I would like you to refer to question one in assignment two for manufacturing accounts, Okuseku Limited. Then just take your time, go through, try to separate the direct cost from the indirect cost, determine your prime cost, 
determine your factory overheads, sum them up. If there's any adjustment for work in progress, add the opening, then subtract the closing work in progress to determine your cost of production. I do hope you would find this exercise very useful.